showing the King Slim D2 dash cam. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I've taken everything out of the box, but this is the box it came in. It was uh, packaged quite nicely. Um, and right here, as you can see on this chair, are all of the things in the box, I'll just go through them. Uh, we'll uh, get it all connected up. This obviously is not inside of a vehicle. Uh, but uh, we'll plug it all in, power it up, and I'll just kind of show you uh, how this thing works. Uh, so we got the quick start guide here. Uh, I'm using a Lexar 128 gigabyte uh, class 10 U3 high endurance SD card. This was not included. You have to purchase this yourself. Uh, you can use any uh, SD card up to 128 gigabytes. I recommend a, um, a class 10 uh, high endurance, uh, basically. Uh, a dash cam is probably one of the most stressful applications of using any sort of SD card. So you want to get the best card you can. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be replacing it pretty quickly. And um, obviously, this is sort of the the magic to the whole the whole equation. If you don't have an SD card that works really well, uh, you're not going to be able to have your footage when you need it. So definitely don't skimp out and get like a two or three dollar uh, eBay SD card. Uh, get a get a good one. This was, you know, like I said, only twenty five dollars or so. So, um, definitely worth it. Uh, this dash cam uh, right now it's on sale on Amazon for sixty dollars. The normal price is eighty dollars. So, um, it's definitely a great deal. So we got the quick start guide here, uh, the Kingslim D two dash cam. It's only a couple pages. It's a bunch of different um, languages, or okay, two different languages, English and Japanese, uh, seven pages. Uh, this just kind of shows, you know, how to get going, and I'm going to be doing uh, basically the same thing this guide tells you to do. So first things first, uh, we have the camera itself. It's a pretty small unit. Um, it's a pretty good size screen on here. Um, I don't, I should probably know this. It's I think it's probably a three or so inch screen. Uh, the camera lens has a nice protective cover on it, as well as the screen itself. I have not removed either of them. It's got a mini USB power. It has the uh, place where you plug in the windshield mount. This right here, AV in, this is where you plug in the backup camera, which is included. This right here is your micro SD card slot. Uh, you got a button right there. This is the the lens. Uh, you can't, some of these you can spin it to zoom in or out, or out. This one I guess you can't. And then we have some more buttons on the side here. Uh, you have a, well, we'll go over this when we actually plug it in, but uh, this is, I believe this is your menu key. This is your power button right, right here. And then you have a forward and backwards button. Um, this right here, this is the cable you use to connect the backup camera. It's a nice and long cable, uh, plenty of length, um, from, should work for everything from your regular two or four door sedan to, um, I believe, uh, I have, I have a, you know, a pretty big cargo van that I've installed another one of these cameras in. And this cable was just the perfect amount of length to go from the very front of the van to the very back of it. I think it's a 148 inch wheelbase Ford Transit 150. Um, so yeah, this should pretty much cover any vehicle unless you're driving like a semi truck or something like that. Uh, this is where the camera plugs in. As you see, this is the connector. This is the connector on the backup camera itself. Uh, so that plugs in right over here. This goes into the camera and this red wire, it's optional, but I, I recommend it because it's not that hard to do. Uh, this actually plugs into the backup light on your vehicle. So uh, basically, if you know how to change the light bulb for the reversing light, like the white lights on the back of your car that turn on when you put the car in a reverse, this you're going to plug in. You're going to somehow splice this in. I actually just jammed it into the light bulb socket or the light bulb it had a little, this is what I'm talking about. I have a Honda Odyssey 2002 
and I was able to just unplug the reversing lamp and sort of jam this into the positive side. So the color it red to remind you goes into the positive on the backup lamp. And what that does is when you put your vehicle in reverse, it'll take the backup camera and put that on the full screen here, which is a nice little feature. Uh, it shows lines on it. So if you have an older vehicle like I do, the O2 Odyssey, uh, or any older vehicle that doesn't have a backup camera, this, other than being a super you know, nice dash cam, it also gives you that reverse camera capability, which is super cool. This little orange thing is an awesome feature. Uh, I thank King Slim for including this because I've installed dash cams where you don't have this and you sort of see a mess of wires everywhere. This is a trim panel pusher, I believe it's called. Uh, basically what it lets you do is you can uh, push the wires into the trim panels of your car. So when you're done, you don't see any wires. You get a very professional looking installation and you don't really need to know anything about electronics or anything like that to do it. So um, I know it's probably only like a couple of cents to make this or whatever, but it's a nice little touch, um, makes the installation look a lot better than if you did not have it. This is your windshield or dashboard, I believe you can also use it for if you're in a state where they don't let you mount stuff to the windshield. Uh, it's your uh, windshield mount. They put a little sticker on there to keep it clean. Um, this lets you anchor it down, spin that, and then this goes into the camera. So the first thing you're gonna do when you get this is you're going to insert the SD card into the camera. Very simple. So let's just grab our SD card. And um, they, make this, they make this idiot proof so you can't stick it in the wrong way like I probably do if you didn't. They didn't do that rather. Like I said, that's backwards. Sorry for the video, I'm trying to do this with one hand here. All right, you just push the card in. If you didn't see that, you put the card in and then you push it down and it will click. So that's, that's clicked in. Perfect, the next thing you're gonna wanna do, and I like to always do this, I like to wire it all up before I bring it out to the actual car to make sure everything works before you spend an hour or two or whatever it takes to install it and then realize something's broken. This, it is keyed so that you can't stick this in the wrong way either. Sort of just rotate this along and, or you can actually you can be smart and look at uh, where the actual key is. Yeah, see right, right over here. See there's this little notch in there. Well, there's also that notch in this. There's a notch right here, so you're gonna stick that in there. And then just push it together. And you push it until you sort of feel it click in um, there. So now we got the backup camera hooked in. I'm not gonna unwrap this because it is super long. And I, unfortunately, I don't have any way to test the backup camera capability other than the fact that I own another, I own another camera also made by this company, King Slim, and um, it worked flawlessly when I did it. So it's a super cool feature. This just sticks right into the top here. Uh, they include a nice, super long power adapter, not quite as long as the other one, but in my experience, I found that this is way longer than you need it to be, which in my opinion is good. You can always zip tie or use uh, the tie that it came with. Uh, it, it was tied up nicer. I already, I lost that cable tie already. Uh, but they do include one for your convenience. And what I recommend doing is after you install it, just wrap up the unused cable, tie it off. Uh, I don't know why they don't use micro USB. I don't, I guess it doesn't really matter. This is mini USB, so you can't use this to charge your cell phone. Maybe that's why they do it. Um, this charger... So then you just plug this right in here. This charger actually is rated for, I think, up to 30 volts. So if you have a 24 volt vehicle, uh, you can use it for that as well. That isn't as common. It's mostly for bigger trucks. Pretty much every car is, at least here in the United States, is 12 volt. But yeah, it says uh, charger input 8 slash 36 volts. Uh, so I guess it goes down as low as 8 volts, which can happen if you heavily loaded your your vehicle's 12 volt port, which I don't recommend. You'll probably blow the fuse. Most of them are for 15 amps, although some newer vehicles, like my um, 2018 Transit cargo van, uh, goes up to 20 amps. Uh, this barely uses anything. Uh, 
Let's see, it's rated for five. The output is five volts at 1500 milliamps. Uh, some cell phones will use more than that, which is probably why they use the mini USB, so you don't try to charge a cell phone that'll uh, exceed the capabilities of this. Either way, um, just use it for what it's meant for. This plugs into a regular cigarette lighter port, auxiliary port, whatever you want to call it. For the sake of this demonstration, I have this little adapter I've set up here. Uh, this came with something. This did not come with the camera, but this is meant for your vehicle either way. So when you plug it in, oh, look at that. We've already turned on. So, okay, so I have the backup camera hooked up. I have the um, power hooked up. Um, SD card need to format. So the first thing you want to do after you plug it in, um, let's put the windshield mount on first. I apologize for not being more organized here, but uh, either way, you'll see this guy right here. This is, um, sort of has a notch in it. You're gonna, it only, they pro they really do make this idiot proof, which I, which I love about these. You really can't do it wrong. We're gonna have to probably unplug that to make it easier to install the, uh, the windshield mount holder. So you get the notch. Basically the, uh, side that, where the notch does not extend all the way to is gonna be the, on the left side of the camera. Um, nope, I... Got that backwards. All right, stick it in there. However, you get it to fit. The um, the side where. All right, I'm just gonna have to. There we go. Apologize for the bad video. But uh, this is the one step that's not easy to do with one hand. You have to unplug it. So I did just unplug the power and you'll see the camera is still on. All right, I was right at first. Um, you want the side where the, uh, the notch does not extend all the way to the end. That's gonna be facing the left side of the camera if you're holding it upright. You're just gonna stick it into the top here. And then you're just gonna push it and then this does take a bit of force to push in so you're gonna push it and it does click when it's all the way in there we go the next one of these I'm uh, looking at getting some sort of a tripod or a head mount or something because uh, you really need you really need to use two hands to plug that one in so now um, so I take all that back first thing you want to do is put the windshield mount on uh, that makes it a lot easier to plug the, or it makes it easier to install the windshield mount if the wires aren't already plugged in. So windshield mount, plug in the mini USB power, plug in the uh, backup camera. All right, now we'll take a look. Backup camera's on the left, power's on the right, and uh, the windshield mount is here. Um, before sticking this to your windshield, or dashboard or whatever, you want to just take the uh, little tab on the plastic. Uh, you kind of just peel up on the corners and peel it off. There's probably a tab somewhere on it. Yeah, it's right here. There's a little tab. Uh, it doesn't really matter though. You just kind of have to peel this off however it comes off. And I'm not going to do that because I actually do want to use this camera. And if you peel it off and it gets all dirty, the suction isn't as great. And then it can fall off. So either way, once you uh, plug everything in, um, route the wires to the back of your car, uh, use this to push it into the trim, or if you don't want to do that, or in the case of my van where there is no trim in the back, they have graciously included these cable clips. Um, what these do is, I'll we'll take them out of here. They give you, a, they give you, what is it? One, two, three, four. They give you six of these, which should be more than enough. Basically what these are is there is an adhesive on one side. Uh, you have to just peel this off to get the adhesive. Um, and then this can just stick to the, pretty much it'll stick to any smooth surface. And then you can loop the cable through here. And when the cable's looped through, you just push this down and sort of push it to close it. And uh, that'll hold the cable in. Um, uh, there we go. 
yeah, you basically just want to stick that under one of the... Oh, I see. Yep. Well, this is really a, you know, coming along for the ride for the first time I'm setting this up. I've not set this up and tested it ahead of time, as you can obviously see. Uh, there's a little clip right there. You push the big piece on the outside of it, and that will hold. So just show that again. You put the cable through the middle. You put the cable through this gap right there. Take this, push it around the outside of it, and uh, it can be undone if you want by by sort of pushing down even harder and then just pulling it out of that clip right there and then that's if you want to take the, take the cable out or put it somewhere else uh, this little middle th there's a, it almost looks like there's this you don't I guess you could put the cable through that loop if if you want but the way I've always used these is that little thing sort of pushes down this thing in the middle so if you put the cable through here you push down and now that sort of holds the cable in I don't know if that's how it's designed it doesn't really tell you in the quick start guide at least uh, but you could, really doesn't matter it's, it's your preference I guess it hold however it holds the cable but I prefer to put the cable as close as possible to the actual back of this thing this and then that sort of actually grips it a little bit and so it doesn't you know slide around as much but I would prefer to, you know, this is really what, what you want to do for your professional installation. And then if there's any areas where you can't uh, get the cable hidden inside of the trim of your vehicle, then I guess you could use these to, to hold it the rest of the way. Uh, these right here, these are for your reversing camera if you are uh, lazy and, and don't do it correctly. Um, well, they do actually, there's, you could do it two ways. The installation manual gives you two options for putting the backup camera on. And they even say the easier installation is to stick it on the inside of the back window of your car. So the backup camera is actually inside of your vehicle. Um, and if you see this bracket, uh, there's a screw on either side of this. So you can tighten those screws down. Basically you either use one of these. So you peel the adhesive off of one side of this. There's two sides there's actually adhesive on both sides of this so it's like a piece of double-sided tape you peel the adhesive off one side and then you stick this to the back of the camera just like that um, and then you peel the other side of the adhesive off and then you stick it anywhere on the inside of your car where it can see out the back window and then you get the angle you want it to be pointing at and then you tighten the screw on either side it's just a Phillips screw. Any, you know, basic Phillips screwdriver will, will tighten these screws. That is not included, but um, I think most people probably have a Phillips screwdriver somewhere. Uh, it's the screwdriver that looks like a plus. I prefer to uh, install this by the license plate, which they do mention in the quick start guide. Uh, that's where, you know, if you buy have a car where it came with a backup camera installed at the factory, that's where in just about every vehicle that's where the dash cam is or the backup camera is installed and that's actually going to provide the best uh, that that's how the camera is designed if you install it right by it right uh, right on top of your license plate is really where you want to put this uh, they give you some screws I don't know why they include four of these because you really only need one uh, maybe they figure that people screw it up which is exactly <laughs> as you probably guessed that's what happened when I did it uh, I screwed it up a couple times um, so also, and I guess if you want to move it, because if you install it inside your car, then you decide that the picture quality isn't very good. You get a glare or whatever. Uh, you can take it off and use another one of these pieces of adhesive. They also give you screws. They give you two screws. I don't know why they give you a bunch of sets of screws. Uh, I would not recommend using these screws. I tried and they're not that great. Um, I guess I'll put a caveat to that. I didn't pre-drill holes and uh, these screws pretty much just, uh, they broke when I was trying to drill them into the metal of my car to put it on the light, above the license plate. If you're going to use these screws, you definitely want to pre-drill a hole uh, because these screws are not very strong. I opted to use different screws, which doesn't really matter. It's a pretty uh, generic hole that uh, it's a pretty big hole here any you know suitable screw will work but basically you want to install this above your license plate 
um, take the, uh, there was a little piece of adhesive, or there was a little protector on here. I took that off already. Um, and then the trouble there is you have to route this wire inside your car somehow. I was able to stick it through where the wiring for the, the backup lights go, which worked out well because it also made it easy to install this thing, the backup light um, cable. Either way, once you do all that, uh, you get to the actual dash cam itself. Uh, SD card needs to be formatted. So this is not a touch screen, so we have to use the menu keys here. So I push menu, uh, and that gets you into the menu. In the menu, you have all these different choices. So to get into the menu, you're going to push this key that says M on it, uh, which is this one right here. It's sort of the one in between the two arrow keys. You push that, and then you use the arrow keys to go through the menu. So we're going to click the format option. Uh, oops. So to get into the menu, you push the M key. When you get to format, you then use the other button, which is like your OK button. Uh, so push the, OK, that's not obviously it. See, is this a touch screen? You know what? Ah, I see. The but So the button on the other side is OK. So it says right here, Format SD card at once, fast format, definitely keep that checked, otherwise you're gonna be sitting here all day. So right now the cancel button is selected, so I'm gonna use the arrow keys to, to click confirm, hit okay. It's formatting the SD card. All right, now my card is formatted. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna set the date and time properly because Without that, uh, your recordings aren't gonna be labeled properly, so scroll over to date time, hit okay. Uh, 2020, that is correct. Next, whoops. Uh, so, it, definitely the other one of these I have by this company is a touch screen, which makes it a lot easier. Nope, 2020. Use the okay button to go through here, so. Seven, it is September, okay. Today is the 17th. And the time, it is something like... Um, I believe it is, yeah, 10.13. Uh, 10.15 actually. 10.15. If you want, you can set the date format. By default, it is year, month, day. I'm fine with that. You can set your time format. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's fine. How do we kind of proceed past this? All right. Oh, I screwed that up. Go back to date time. Okay, so it didn't save any of that. All right. Oops. I will say, uh, I really prefer the touchscreen model um, because it's just so much easier to have a touchscreen. But hey, this is a pretty you know pretty inexpensive camera. You really can't beat the price. All right, we're gonna go with that one. Seventeen now. Gonna hit okay. 
wonder how I can skip over that. Time format. There we go. I know I set the time wrong. That's okay for the video. All right, language. It's already set to English, I assume, because I can read this. Boot sound. Uh, you can turn on and off the sound where every time you turn your car on or off or every time you turn the camera on or off, it'll make this uh, sort of a uh, sound when it starts up. Some people might find that annoying, so you can shut that off if you want. Speaker, you can set the volume. Right now it's set to high. Um, key voice, that's basically as I'm scrolling through the menu, it's making the no these noise, this noise. You can turn that off if you want. Uh, mirror image, so this actually, I did turn this on, it's on by default. Basically, if you um, want your backup camera video to be looking like it, you know, when you look at your rear view mirror, everything is sort of reversed. Uh, like That's why, you know, like ambulances have ambulance written backwards on them so that it, you read it forward through your rear view mirror. Uh, mirror image on basically makes this backup camera simulate a rear view mirror. If you don't have it on, it, the image actually, in my experience, looks kind of weird because everything looks backwards because the camera itself is facing backwards. Uh, with mirror image on, objects that are on your left actually will be on your left and objects on your right will be on your right. Uh, so I recommend keeping that on. USB mode. Oops. Yeah, as you see, I keep screwing that up by accident. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, definitely no touchscreen. So USB mode. Uh, so that has to be plugged into your PC. Basically, uh, that'll be, you use that to set the correct mode for when you're copying stuff to your computer. In my experience, I've always just taken the SD card out of the camera, put it into the included adapter. Most S micro SD cards come with an adapter and then just plug that into the SD card slot on my laptop. Uh, you can plug a cable into your PC, but unless you have a mini USB cable, which most people don't, uh, it's just so much easier to just put the micro SD card right into your computer and then that works uh, in my experience a lot better. I've never actually plugged it into my computer. Frequency, uh, so 60 hertz. If you're in the United States or Canada, you're going to want to keep this on 60 hertz. Uh, Mexico too, I think, uh, basically North America. If you're over in Europe or the UK, you're going to want to set this to 50 hertz. Uh, what this is, is because... Um, some lights, as we get into more modern lighting, it doesn't matter as much. Uh, but the frequency of the actual uh, main uh, power, the main's AC power, is alternating at 60 hertz or 60 times a second. And so certain light bulbs, like incandescent light bulbs and some fluorescent lights, also cycle at that rate. Uh, you can't see it with your eyes, but it can cause a weird sort of blinking effect on video when, you know, with street lighting is is that a frequency and this camera is not set to that same frequency so uh, it should be fine at the default if you're in the United States but basically the software on this camera has uh, the ability to sort of filter out that that blinking um, video encode so by default they set this to H264 I highly recommend you change it to H265 see it right up there it's going H264 H265 uh, H.265 takes a lot more processing power to view and record, but the video is about half the size, maybe 60% of the size of H.264, so you'll get way more videos to, to actually store on here if you set it to H.265. Screensaver, one minute. Uh, I prefer to keep my dash cam, have it never turn off. You'll see, as you saw a couple times, the, the screen turned off uh, while I was talking. So I'm going to set this screensaver to off. Um, license plate. If you so wish, you can set your license plate number on here. Uh, it sort of imposes that on the video. So 
you know, if you ever had to like provide a video to the police or something, it'll, you know, have your license plate on it. Um, I'm not going to go through the pain of doing that now. This video is already getting kind of long. Parking guard, this is a neat little feature. What this does is, um, the camera doesn't really have a battery. It has some sort of, it either has a, it either has a super capacitor or some sort of very small battery. But basically it has enough energy to stay on for a minute or so after you remove power from it. And what it does is this has an accelerometer or a G-force sensor in it. And so if you set the parking guard, it'll detect if someone hits your car while it's parked. And if it detects that, it'll immediately turn on, start recording. So the idea is that if someone, you know, slams into your car in a parking lot or while your car is otherwise unoccupied and the camera is normally off, it can turn on, capture their license plate or, you know, some identifying information and then you can see who hit your car. Uh, this is the sensitivity. You can, by default, it's turned off, but you can set it to low, medium, or high. Um, so let's say set it to middle. Um, you never know whether it's high sensitivity or high as in it takes a high force to hit it. Uh, to be honest, you'll have to test that yourself. But um, yeah, I don't know why it's set to low. I thought I put it to medium. All right, we'll put it to middle. There we go. Record audio on. Um, some people may not want audio to be recorded. It also makes the files a little bit smaller. I'd keep it on. Use the OK button to switch that. Loop record. So what this does is, by default, it's set to three minutes. And that means it records three minutes of video, saves a file, records another three minutes of video. It doesn't mean it only records for three minutes. It means that every video file is going to be three minutes long. And so really what this is, is it just makes it easier to, if you have it set to a, a smaller amount, for example, if you have it set to one minute, then you're going to, every single video file is going to be one minute long, which can make it easier to um, send the videos. They're going to be smaller. Um, I think three minutes is a good compromise. Five minutes is probably fine too, but most dash cams, for whatever reason, it's three minutes. So when you open up the, the folder on your computer after you put the SD card in, you're going to have a huge list of videos. Each one of those videos is three minutes. Um, and um, yeah, I have no problem with that. So your resolution, uh, you can set, let's see, our options are. So this is, by default, it's set to what it was just at, two and a half. So 2K plus 1080p, I believe, yeah, you either get 2K plus 1080p or 1080p plus 1080p. Your backup camera only records at 1080p, which is perfectly fine uh, in my experience. And the forward facing camera, the maximum resolution is um, 2K. So that's what, the, that's what it was set to by default. I like to set it to the max, you know, more resolution means a higher quality image, so why not? Um, and so that's basically it. Yeah, so uh, version, this just kind of tells you the software version. Uh, you can update the software on these cameras. I believe it has something to do, like you put a file on the SD card and um, then plug it into the camera and then it'll update it. I haven't done that. This is exactly how it came out of the box. Uh, so let's exit the menu by pushing the M button on the side here. Um, and there we are. So, uh, real quick, you know, this is the view out of the front of the camera. And as you see in the upper right hand corner, this is the rear camera. Let's uh, just grab that. And there we go, it's hidden underneath here. Yeah, as you can see in the upper right hand corner, the rear video is moving. As you're driving, that's what you'll see. Um, you can change views, um, like I had mentioned before, with the uh, backup, and you can see the record buttons blinking with the backup camera. Um, if you plug that little red wire in, you shift into reverse, it'll make the whole screen your backup camera video, which is cool. So let's see, if, you know, let's push some buttons. Whoops, so I guess that top button here, that takes a, a still snapshot. Uh, that M button goes into the menu, like we already said. The bottom, this button right here, the third one down, that turns the microphone on and off. See the uh, mic going on and off. And uh, the power button turns the screen on or off. 
see the record button is the record light is still flashing uh, I prefer to use this to turn the screen on or off uh, if you don't like the screen being on you know some people find it distracting at night uh, you can either set the screen saver in the menu and then that'll turn it off automatically um, but it's simple enough to just push this um, and I think uh, when you push OK um, Oh, I see. So the OK button basically turns your recording on or off. So if you uh, are having a conversation or something, you don't want to be recorded in the car, you can turn it off and then turn it back on. Um, and then the camera also will automatically, any clips that the G sensor, I believe, will capture the, you know, if it detects that you've been hit, it'll save that video off. Uh, it'll lock it rather so by default you know however big your sd card is it'll keep recording those three minute videos again and again and again until your card is full and then it will delete the oldest one to to save the newest one so basically the way it works is the card at all times will have the last x amount of time from the latest drive you went on to however much space you can fit on the sd card you put in there um and so it'll always have that that amount of time but when you lock a file so if it detects that you've been hit for example with the G, with the uh, accelerometer in here or if the parking monitor records a video that file will be locked so that it does not get deleted um in reality you know most of the time if you've been in an accident you're going to immediately review the video but it's a good feature to have you know maybe you notice a ding on your car that um you know, you notice a month later and say, oh, wait a minute, let me check the video, and then it will still be there. Uh, the parking monitor, I believe, will notify you the next time you turn the camera on, so that probably, you know, either way, it's a nice feature to have just to be safe that that, that file will not be deleted. So yeah, that, that's basically it. That's the King Slim D2 dash cam. Um, maybe I was a little too harsh about no, no touchscreen. Uh, it isn't that hard to get used to the little the menu functionality, but um, and some people like that because you don't accidentally touch the screen and you know hit a whole bunch of buttons. But uh, overall, for sixty bucks, uh, the quality is great. The H two sixty five is a great feature to have. Um, a lot of people don't really know a lot about that, but basically, what it comes down to is that you can save a lot more video on the camera, which is awesome. And um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I recommend it. I have, like I said, I have another camera by them. I don't know the brand, but it's the one that goes over your your rear view mirror. The uh, I think it's the DL10. Uh, that that's a great dash cam, and I'm sure this one will be too. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for the screw ups, but um yeah, King Slim D2 dash cam. Um, go ahead and buy it if you want a, a very affordable, high quality dash cam.